Hello and welcome to yet another edition of Real Time Talk right here on Black Drum TV. This is that show where we talk about things that affect us on a daily basis. My name is Chiwete Onyema. Thank you so much for joining us. Remember, we would love you to interact with us. Follow us all through our social media platforms. It's right there on your screen. My guest today is a guy who has energy. The energy is more than enough to go around between myself and the crew. You'll meet him shortly after this break. Stay with us. All right, welcome back to the show. This is Real Time Talk right here on Black Drum TV. My name is Chiwete Onyem. I told you before we went on the break that my guest today, hmm, he has a lot of energy. He's a hype man, so now you understand why he needs all that energy. And not just that, uh, he is also an actor. Turn Up Commissioner joins me right now. How you doing, bro? I'm fine, thank you. Bro. I mean, what does it take to be a hype man, though? Is it just the energy? Not just the energy. First of all, you need to know what you're doing because hyping is not all about having the energy to scream on stage. Okay. I always tell people this. You have to have the passion. You have to know what you're doing. It's like, it's like okay, I want to make tea. What are the contents that I need to make tea? Okay. You understand? Mm -hmm. So you, you, the passion has to be there, and then also know what you're doing, basically. Okay, so how, how long have you been doing this? Mm, I started since 2019. Sorry, 2009. And... Okay. Uh, then we were not known as um, hype men. We were okay. called MCs. Okay. You know, so then we were not even professional like this. You know, it was just, hey, yo, hey, yo, one time. Hey, there was no one time then, Seth. <laughs> it was jump, 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 scream, scream. But, you know, as time goes on, um, 2012, I took it to the club, um, Baytown. I can still remember vividly well. Uh, I did that for like a year or two. And then 2015, I decided to take it into the um, um, wedding industry. Okay. I mean, I can categorically say is that Turn Up Commissioner brought hype into the wedding industry. Okay, so, so how has it been? I mean, taking taking hype to weddings. Um, it's been good all the way, but I can't say all the way because um, at a point in time, I had some. How do I call it? There was some. I call them otaji or I don't know. Otaji what meaning like enemies or something? Not enemies, really, but but they were like I mean I had issues with few people in the industry. You understand? Okay. You know I started with a company called Trendy B Events. Okay. You understand? I started as a as an usher actually for an event. So from there I got promoted to being a coordinator. So one day I just said, Ah, come! I didn't do this thing for club. Now. I mean I even try um, for a wedding. Let's see if it's gonna work out. I did it the first time. It worked. I did it the second time, it worked. The first time I did it, I was expecting my sack letter. Because hmm. my boss didn't tell me to do it. I did it out of my own volition. Like, okay. let me try this thing. When I did it the first time, she was looking at me, but she didn't say anything. In my mind, I was like, guy, your sack letter, they wait for you. <laughs> Don't worry. You know, they do it, they do send you. You understand? Okay. So when I did it the second time, and then the third time, she didn't say anything. Then she called me on the phone. I was like, I tell you, say your sack letter, they call. You understand? And then she called me, I like, Ah, she, I like what you did at this wedding and at this wedding and at this wedding. Um, I think we have to incorporate it with our hmm. stuff. Like, okay. Yeah. Okay, let's go. You know, and from there, hmm. you know, jobs were coming from other planners also. Okay. But, you know, being that I'm with, the co with a company, so I was working majorly with them. Then once in a while with other planners. Hmm. Before I could say Jack Robinson, man, Son of Commissioner became a household name and... That was just it, you know. It's been, it's been, it's been a bit of ups and downs, but I mean, the good part has been major. Major. Yeah. Okay. All right. We well, thank God for that. All right. Let's go straight into the topics we're going to be looking at today. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, I mean, we've been hearing this for a long time. In 2012, this issue took most Nigerians to the streets and we protested and, you know, we made noise about it. But in 2021, we're still talking about it, which is the fuel subsidy. Now, uh, Melikiari, who is uh, the GMD of NNPC, has said that uh, Nigeria can no longer pay for 120 billion Naira subsidy monthly again. So what does that mean is they're taking away subsidy. And what that means is there fuel will be is going up. a fuel hike, fuel, uh, hike in fuel price. And I mean, they, they said, it, funny enough, this particular administration, I'm talking about Boris administration, had said it earlier that, you know, they were not paying subsidy, that's why it increased the other time. So I think this would be almost like the fourth time, I mean, the fuel has been increased in this particular administration. I mean, what, what's, what, what's your reaction to that? Okay, so first of all, these people that are in this position 
I don't know if they think about an average Nigerian who cannot afford three square meal a day, who can afford a place to stay, who can afford basic things of life. Mm. Now, check out these same people now, when they go to buy fuel for 240 or so. This, this issue has been lingering for so long, like you said. Mm -hmm. And if care is not taken, Nigerians, we've protested against the bad governance, we've protested against the SARS, police brutality and everything. Nothing has been done. Now, this one is coming, this one is irregular for Nigerians. Always, we are removing subsidy today, we are removing it tomorrow. There was a time I saw a post saying that Buari was not informed. Yeah, he said it actually. Uh -huh. He's actually doubling as the Minister of Petroleum. There's a new name for this country. Nigeria, Udujumola, Nigeria. Like, we are suffering and smiling. You understand? Because the government knows that don't worry, they will cope, they will adapt. So they keep doing whatever they want to do. Now, I said something to someone. I said, if this um, NSAS protest yeah. does not birth anything good for this country, then forget it. Nigeria is gone. Totally. Because if we say we want to go into the streets and start protesting against this, still yet nothing is going to happen. It is a norm for them. They already know how an average Nigerian man minds work. Mm. It's 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 a it's a it's like a chess game. We are playing it like this. And we'll play the one, we go chop, no we'll play this one, no we'll play this one. This has been going on for so long. And if if we mm. as a citizen does not grab the bull by the horn. Okay, but, but some might say, I mean, to be fair with the government, 120 billion naira every month is a whole lot of money. <laughs> Can they really keep up? I mean, some might also say that, okay, how about we take it out once and for now? Okay, we know they pay subsidy again. And that's, we know that, okay, this is going to be the fixed price for fuel permanently. Okay, now, we are the owner of the fuel. Now, we get them. Why are we still dilly-dallying on, okay, let's remove it. No, don't remove it. Okay, take it off. We, we have, see, Nigeria is blessed. We are, we are, we, we have all the resources we need to survive as a country. But no, because we have greedy leaders. They would rather sell it to this country, collect the money, do one transaction, collect loan from this one. We, we keep going into debt every day, every day, every day. So all this money that they are trying to gather, even this money that they, they said they don't want to pay, mm -hmm. please, do you want to tell them that we don't have this money? We have it. We know we have the money. Now these men, they, they, they want to chop everything. But they've also spoken about um, refineries. I mean, the, the, the um, FEC, the Federal Executive Council, approved $1.5 billion the other day to fix Port Harcourt refinery. So, so, I mean, Dangote refinery also is, being, is under construction. Okay. So that might also help out at the end of the day. Okay, so after Dangote's refinery, which other one do we have? We have actually that, four. That is visible. We actually, we actually, we have four, just that they're not, um, Sally, they know they work at the moment, but he did. So what, what are we saying? I want to say something in Yoruba. They you have go, to it in English. They go, okay, let me say, <laughs> <laughs> okay, let me, just, let me just say it this way. Okay. You see our government here, mm. they get starting. You see that starting here, yeah. now to just let them see what we are doing. Once they go, ah, they are working, they are working, then they stop. The question will now be, ah, but they are doing this thing, so-so thing, so Then you now start hearing, and there's no funds for so-so thing again. There's no funds, we need so-so. Mm. And Nigerians, I know, this is our government, I don't know, they know something called millions or thousands. Everything is always billions. For what? We are, see, Baba, we have, we have, we have citizens mm. that can actually do one or two things at all these um, refineries. Mm. Why must you go and call international bodies to come and help you fix things here. When we, I mean, we, we've, got, we've got engineers. We've got, if I don't know the people where they work for that uh, area, but I know we have capable hands that can actually do things. But no, these governments, these men, they will not use their own people. They go and be calling Chinese men. Now, Chinese men, when they call, not be build, they go build you. And they won't build you in Naira. They will build you in their own currency. 
All right, let's move elsewhere now. Now, uh, Renault Mokri, uh, of course, we know he's a very vocal guy, especially when it comes to things uh, against this present administration. Now, he put out something. He says, uh, you say you want to treat your girlfriend like the queen she is. Do you know how stupid you sound? A queen is a woman that is married to a king. Does that not tell you that it is only your wife you are meant to treat like a queen? Wow, that's pretty interesting. I mean, wow. I want to believe that now, the, the, the way this story is coming out, is looking as though probably he's referring to men who maybe have side chicks, side chicks. or who, have a, who has a girlfriend, mm -hmm. you know, you want to give out your best and um, you're not giving the same attention to your wife. First off, a lot of people are asking this question, I don't know, a lot of ladies have asked, why do men cheat? What, what do you think is the reason? Okay, so first of all, yeah, mm -hmm. I am going to be 100% sincere all right. with you and then our viewers out there. All right. I want to tell you something that there is no major reason why <laughs> men cheat. No major reason. Okay. But then there are few reasons too. Okay. Now imagine you dating your spouse for about let's say two, three years. Mm -hmm. She's all that sexy and everything. She's always looking good, you know, that spark is there and everything. Then you get married. All of a sudden, she started um tying rapper. Okay, a person, a person that hates rappers, I'm going to burn everything. Trust me. You start to retire rap hard, you start to do one or two things. Now, once that starts happening, that man would only lose interest. That one is very sad thing. Me, I'm somebody like that. When we're dating, you they wear bomb shorts, you they wear this, you they look nice. You they, I mean, you they even, don't let me use the word twerk, but mm -hmm. forgive my French. <laughs> you understand? Yeah. You they look fine and everything, then you, I can't put you for hours, finish. On the tie wrapper. Okay, imagine person with the tie wrapper who can't carry through the stick puts. No, why, why, why? That is the end of it. Are you in the village? You understand? Why are you? Why are you doing that? Again, like I said, mm. when, when during the cutting days, when the spark is there and everything is going well, you see that thing will make your man like you. Will make your man fall in love with you. Don't let it go. Don't kill it. As a matter of fact, try to do more. Uh, okay, we've got a quick break. Uh, when we come back, there's more to talk about. Remember, this is Real Time Talk right here on Black Drum TV. We'll be back. Welcome back to the show, of course. This is Real Time Talk right here on Black Drum TV. I still have with me Turn Up Commissioner here, and we were talking about different issues that have been trending on social media. Now, another one is, uh, of course, uh, a statement by Tokyo Makiwa. Now, she says, I know we all love a good, hot, piping, steaming tea but can we try to cultivate the habit of not bashing women for the wrongs of their partners? If a woman gets cheated on by her husband part or partner, resist the urge to blame her for his wrongdoing. And no, it's no reflection on her. Stop saying men who disgrace you. That is alluding and accepting shame for another man's crime. Instead, say then that men will disgrace themselves. Adults should carry their cross without the distribution of shame. The woman was not in the mix. Leave her out of the insult. Okay, all right. So if someone cheats, if, if, if there's a case of someone cheating, would you blame the partner? What do you think, what do you think? Okay, so you see this cheating topic here. Mm. We cannot overemphasize on the fact that I don't want to sound Harsh, but at the same time, I still want to sound as sincere as possible. Okay. Brother, people, male and female, them they do. Normal level. Without strings at the, I mean, I get guys who say they go go pick us and stuff. They will just pick up a girl, vroom, bah, 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 bah. Everything will happen. They go to your house and they go my own. That's it. Okay. You understand? Now, the reason why they call them cheating is because the feelings don't they involved. You understand? We're right. already calling it a relationship. Mm. You get? Now, if Uncle Abel leaves Mommy Abel to go and do something outside, and then Mommy Abel gets to find out, I feel, me, I'm not saying it's Everybody, a general yeah. opinion. Okay. Me, I feel like, okay, you get to find out. Call your partner. Mm. Sit him down. I don't think I don't know say you do this thing. I know, but I won't know. What make you go do it? Because sometimes we, we would say that um, instead of asking your partner questions, 
You just say, okay, I found out that you were cheating. I'm out. Sometimes that's not the solution. That's the mistake. Yeah, but for some, but for some most people, like Nigerians. Cannot, but for some people, they just cannot stand the fact that you cheated. So it's. But bro, at the end of the day, is. what are we cheating with? Because they will say, men, we do this. Men, we do that. Men are scum. Men are scum. But, una, you see, that gender, they are the most confused gender. Do you know why? Now, you they blame men for doing this. Why you women, no figada, talk say, okay, you know what's in, any man where you don't hear, say him, don't marry, don't do anything with that. No, they don't go tell them, say, no, they too, they want to do. You don't want to, mm -hmm. so this thing, na, na both ways. Okay. Oh, they, now you don't even bad people say, they don't even carry on so far. Men know they carry on so far. They'll they will, they will bring it around the wife. Some men are that loose. They are that loose. They will pick the wife, best friend, or wife, sister friend or something. They give them back to back. Before you know what's up, the person will be able to keep quiet anymore because probably feelings are now getting involved. Then she go cast them. When she can't cast them, Madame will come here. Now, Madame, what were you doing that period? Because sometimes too, men who just carry themselves say, no, I, I go do I was like, yeah, yeah. No, there must be something going on at that particular time. So when they are now saying, oh, na men, na men, na men, na men, let us leave men alone at one point. Let's speak to women. Okay, so if we're going to switch things now, right? And it's a woman who is cheating. Mm -hmm. Are you expecting the men to treat it the same way the woman would treat it if she finds that her husband is cheating? Now, being that we are from, we are from a society where they believe that uh, the world belongs to the man, you understand? Okay. When a man cheats, they'll be like, ah, men are polygamous in nature. Mm -hmm. But when a woman cheats, a woman is not polygamous in nature. How many, how many you want, how many? You want married husbands, you know, possible. There's a, there's a stigma that comes with a married woman sleeping with other men. Mm. The, we all know the world, they will call you, you be this, you be that, you be this, you be that. But it doesn't go that way to men, you understand? Because they believe that eh, she be this one, of, eh, so so person marry 100 wife, that one marry their wife. You understand? This is Africa. You understand? We are allowed, men are allowed to do it. But women are not allowed to marry several wives. So, most of the times, yeah, we cannot blame anybody at the end of the day. Okay. Because if you ask the man why you cheat, he will have a reason. And then sometimes, if you ask the man why you cheat, he will just like, I don't know. Mm. You see? So, it's complicated. Mm -hmm. That's the word. Okay, all right, let's move over to another topic right now. Now, this has to do with a very, very, uh, you know, serious and s interesting situation that happened in Delta State. So, uh, someone wrote on social media, says that Delta State traffic control extorting the sum of 30,000 naira from me simply because I stopped to ask them for direction at a junction in Ekbaan Wari. Now, I was taken to their office at MPA where they asked me to pay... 30,000 naira or pay 75k for psychiatric evaluation. I was asking for directions to Warri Central Hospital to pick up a family friend who had referred me to another hospital before I was accepted. I mean, we see this almost every time. If it's not police that is disturbing you, if it's not, um, if it's not VIU that is disturbing you, FRSC is also there, and of course we all know there's LASMA. <laughs> When and how will these things, will these things ever stop? Well, I don't think it's, if it's going to stop, man, maybe in the next 50 years, because I don't see it stopping anytime soon, number one. Why? Our, our peaceful, uh, our, uh, um, what do they call them? Uh, uh, security sector. Security sector, yeah. Number one, they are not well trained. You understand? Most of them don't know the basic questions they are supposed to ask a citizen. Okay, let's say a citizen that committed maybe, uh, what do they call it? Um, um, uh, what do they call it? They call it one name in Yankee, over speeding, something, yeah, okay, something. Yeah. 
Do we even do do police arrest anybody for over speeding in this country? I don't think so because me I've not heard well, of it before. I'm, I'm not sure if we have so many places where we have speed limits. Though. Exactly. There's no speed limits. You can't really exactly. So I mean, you see you see a driver driving coming one way towards you. Mm -hmm. Niger police fear future away face. As long as the man go drop something for them, you understand. These people are not well. They, they are not getting the 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 OT right. They think is it is all about coming out. Arresting people, whether you commit any offense or you don't commit any offense, as long as they or got DPOC say they break person come or they make money come, that is what they have in their head. But some might say that you know some people drive terribly in Lagos, and that is why we even have some of these you know last mile guys having to get one person or another person you know that they know that would always be an offender. Okay, because we have some crazy people driving on the streets. Okay, so we have FRSC. We have LASMA. Mm -hmm. We have the VIO. Is these three people? They are doing the same thing. They are almost doing the same thing. What is FRS doing? It, FRS is not only issuing your driver's license. So, I mean, they have their post too. You understand? Federal Road Safety, Safety Commission. Commission. So, what is LASMA? This country, yeah, all, all. Our people, our, our governments care about is how to just milk the citizens. That is the only thing that is in their head. Because if you have FRSC, what is VIO still doing there? What are they doing? Because I don't understand why FRSC cannot do the job of VIO and why LASMA is still there. What is LASMA doing? They are not doing anything. So if we have, if we have all these people on the road, Stopping this one, stopping that one, stopping. By the time we check it, they're gonna collect Nigerian salary finish. Because mm. these people are not well, number one, they are not well organized, they are not well trained. What training does a, 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 a last mile official go through? Nothing now. No, is, is it really more about their training or their welfare? Because some have also said they're not paid well. And when these guys are not paid well, they have to look for another means to make money. But when you know say they need to pay you well for one job, what's you go do? Leave. If it is not paying you, you leave. There are different types of jobs out there that you can do. Bus conductor, they make money past last month. They make more money than any last month official. So if you know this job is not paying you well, then leave. You don't have to be a thief extorting from a thief. This country now, monkey collects, monkey thief farm. Finish. Nigeria is a jungle. We have the section of the prey, then we have the predators. May I be predator? I don't lie. Yeah. I know. <laughs> okay, still time to all go on a quick break. When we come back, we'll wrap things up on today's episode. Stay with us. Welcome back to the show. This is Real Time Talk right here on Black Drum TV. My name is Chiwete Unyema, and I still have with me the Turn Up Commissioner here. And uh, we're about to talk about the last topic before we wrap things up on the show. So uh, a certain uh, human rights activist uh, drew the attention of the public on social media, says uh, court orders uh, the remanding of a 12-year-old girl who said she willingly eloped with a 38-year-old man. And uh, there's this report that even the mother of this girl was giving 40,000 naira to just keep quiet, mm. more or less. So a 12-year-old running away with a 38-year-old man. I mean, normally it's a case of the man who's 38 years old would be the one who would actually face everything because mm -hmm. he's the one who's the adult here who should know better. What, what, what's your reaction to that? Things are happening in this country. This is wonderful. 13-year-old. A 12-year-old, actually. 12-year-old. Following a 38-year-old man. The first question we will ask is, how old is this girl's mother? Then number two, what kind of mother is she? Number three, no, let me leave number three because if, I'm, if I should be saying, if I should say we should be asking about the environment where they grew up and all that, that one is nonsense. This girl's mother needs to be prosecuted because you, di okay, my first question is, has that man has anything to add anything to do with that girl? Yeah, you know, yes. There's there's a report that they've started having uh, sexual intercourse. Wonderful. Wonderful. <laughs> oh God. I wish I wish 
Which which part of Nigeria is this? This is the southern part of Nigeria. Southern part of Nigeria. Because we know that if, if it was in the north, this might not be an issue. <laughs> Obviously, it won't be an issue in the north because even immediately they embalm you straight. Say, person will go marry you don't the ground. They go down tell you say when this picking grow up, mm -hmm. that so person go marry. So there won't be an issue on that. Now, if we, even if, if when we look at the constitution, right? I mean, when it comes to age of consent, now it's very very tricky because some people, yes, in the south believe it's supposed to be 18 years. But if you move mm -hmm. to the north, it, I think it's about 11 years for age of consent. So, <laughs> and this lady is 12. So if this lady had, if this lady moved, had moved to a city in the north... There won't be any issue. There's no crime. Obviously. Obviously. There won't so be what, what can we do to at least ensure that, okay, the whole country, we, we are on one stand as regards this, because this thing is just one of the so many situations and reports that we keep hearing. Okay, so one thing I don't get is why do... Um, the different, um, uh, what do they call them? The different parts of Nigeria have mm -hmm. different constitution when it comes to this. Why would the Southerners have their own constitution for um, under age, um, uh, age uh, of consent? Age of consent, and then uh, the Northerners have their own. I'm not sure. See, we the Yorubas get anyone? I doubt them. <laughs> well, part of you, Yorubas are part of the South now. Oh, that's true. <laughs> That's yes, true, sorry. That's so, yeah. But, but come to think of it, waiting that man see. I, I was almost ah, going to say that. Waiting the man. That, that girl is way too young. But now, sorry for saying this, let's turn the table again one more time. Mm -hmm. Let's say it was a woman that was in that man's position and then the lady was a guy. Mm. For me, but where's that? Thank God that I'm not the president because if I was the president, this man no go get my hood again as at this time. What? Really? I'm telling you because this is, this is, it is stupid. This girl never did develop. I doubt if you don't even get breast. So why would you be having sex with a 12 years old girl? What pleasure are you deriving from it? It's probably... It, Bloody pervert, God forgive me. Wow, okay, all right. So, do you also, I mean, there's, a, there's another aspect to this thing, and that's of course is poverty. Because, I mean, for someone to pay you 40,000 naira 40, as a mother to keep quiet, perhaps poverty is also playing its role in this. Man, poverty, man, actually, yeah, poverty can make you do some, some stupid things that. Even after doing it, you yourself would think again, like, did I really do that? You understand? So, yeah, I, I think I support your point. Mm. Poverty. Because hmm, about the level of poverty in this country now, I only go for your purpose. Okay, all right. On that note, it's a wrap on today's episode of Real Time Talk. But before we go, for those who want to check you out on social media, how can they find you? Okay, if you want to check out um, Turn Up Commissioner on social media, okay. on IG, I am Turn Up Commissioner. On IG, Turn Up Commissioner. On Twitter, at Turn Up Com One. Okay. Turn Up Com One. That is T U R N U P C O W M One. Okay. And then on 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 um, Facebook, it is Sean Wheels Yardwat. Sean Wheels Yardwat. Okay. All so right. check me out. I see what I do. Okay, thank you so Cheers. much, Turnup Commissioner, for thank coming on the show. Thank you very much for having me. We appreciate me. your presence here. Thank you can you follow so me, of course, much. on Twitter and Instagram at Chiwete Onyema. So I'll come away next time. Bye for now.